So today I'll be solving code forces round 797 and this will be a diff 3 round. Given an integer m, the number of available blocks, you must use all blocks to build a pedestal. A pedestal consists of three platforms, second, first and third. Uh, the platform for first place must be strictly higher than second place must be strictly higher than third place also the height for each platform must be greater than zero So you must use all blocks so if you want to use all blocks then let's say n is the height of the longest one then n minus 1 and n minus 2 will give us the answer because we have to make it the minimum as possible n to be minimum as possible so we are going to distribute them evenly like this so this is going to be 3n minus 3 would be equal to let's say n or x so this is gonna be n minus 1 should be equals to n by 3 or x by 3 whatever so n should be equal to x by 3 plus 1 right so if I take in the test case n is between 6 and 10 is power 5 so now that we have found out n now we just display plus two plus uh, two sorry minus one minus two And which order do we have to display? Mm. I don't know if it's right or not, but I'm just gonna go with it. You guys should not do this, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. By the way, this is wrong. So now on. Hmm. Okay. So it might not be divisible by 3. So if n completely wrong okay 
okay so plus one would be the x and minus one with the plus one would be a zero and so at least i did it correctly for this case two three one now i just need to figure out for how to do if it's not divisible by three like in this case so hmm. Three, four, two do not add up to eleven. So I can either so I can either add n percentage three evenly. To what? So if it's there is if it's equal to two, then I need to add two somewhere. So I'm just gonna add it in this one and this one. Else, so this is gonna be just one. Hmm. Else, if the n mod three is equals equals one. Then I only need to add in one, so I'm just gonna add it in. I don't know if it's correct or not. So four five two two three one four four two is wrong. Okay, so four five one is wrong. Hmm. Oh, it's not strictly greater. Okay. So in this condition, if I I want to increase increase this. But now that becomes three five two. That is fine, right? Three five two is fine. Uh, two four one, three four. One. That took a lot of time on this. How many people have seen? Except. Three thousand six hundred people have signed up. This. Like this, four thousand people have already signed up. Nice. Christina has two arrays A and B. Each containing n non-negative integers. Okay, she can perform the following operation on array A 
any number of times. Apply a decrement to each non-zero element of the array that is replace the value of each element with ai minus 1. If ai was 0, its value does not change. Okay. Determine whether Christina can get array B from array A in some number of operations. In other words, can she make A equal to B after some of operations for each? So, for example, N is this, and this she can apply the operation twice, and in two operations she can get an array B from array A. So, what do we have to print actually? Yes or no? Okay. So I'm just going to declare two arrays. I'm just going to copy this. I hope this is the way we are inputting the elements. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So, what am I going to do is create another array in C of 5. I think we don't need this, but let's just keep it. And I'm just going to pop again, traverse the array, and I'm going to store in C of 5 the difference of B of 5 and A of 5. Right. We have to make A of 5 to be equal to B of 5. So, B of I should naturally be smaller. And right. so if C of I is equal to the number, if I is equal to zero, skip. Right. If I is not equal to zero. Then, sorry, if i is equal to 0, then number is equal to c of i. Right, we don't need c of i actually, but this let it be. Uh, oh, wait. We are not changing 0. Okay. If B of I is not equals to B, if B of I So what I'm doing is that if the end result is not zero, then the end result should always like the difference should be the same for each and every person. And I have to check that not equals to zero. Okay, now there is another problem. <coughs> if 
equal equal negative one because all the numbers are non negative so if it it has not already been set then we are going to set it to that number and This is gonna be like, uh, yeah. Then this should be the minimum, right? So if b of i is zero and c of i is like so basically a of i is like five and we already know that the number of operations we have to do is to reach uh, so like uh, number of operations. If, um, if the num is greater than so less than minimum then also we cannot do it right so Let's take care of all the conditions. Fuck. Okay, I just overcomplicated this one. So let's run through it again. So you are given an arrow. Uh, the array is like 3541 and stuff like that. And if you encounter a 0 here and a 1 here, right? So you you can do 1 operation, 2 operation, 3 operation, 4 operation. But you're free to choose any number of operations here. So you at least have to do. So minimum you have to do 1 operation. Because if you don't do, don't do 1 operation, then this won't be turning to 0. Similarly, if there is 2 and 0 health, then you have to do minimum of 2 operations, right? So it should be greater than 2 or equal to, right? So, so, so the operation should be greater than equal to me. Yeah. And there is a fixed value that let's say 3 is changing to something 1, 3 is changing to 1. Then this should be the operation value, right? this should be fixed now. That is my point.
So if bi is not equal to zero and number has not not yet been set, if number has not yet been set, then I don't need to check this. Oh, but I am check. I am setting. Feels right to me. Wrong answer on test two. So main should also be set by them, right? But in this case, it will already be set. So the problem was here already. But let's just keep it that way. It's pretty complicated code for a simple thing, but yeah, I guess it will work. I think. What? Seriously, need to read some everything. I don't. Okay. Number. F number. So I'm not checking. So this is the first time I set number, and if number is. Bi is not equals to zero. Why have I done that? I don't know. <coughs> so Bi is not equal to zero, and Ci is not equal to zero.
So if number has not yet been set, then I set the number to this. And basically I can make this from here. Okay. Number is equal to number to one. I'm setting it. Else I'm gonna check number is equal to CFI. If V of i is equal to zero, then if number has not been yet set, then what else? If it has been set, if number is greater than C of i, then it's fine. But if it's lesser than, then it's not fine. If number has not yet been set, now what? Again, the complexity of many. So at the end I can check if number is greater than or equal to number. number is less than one I can again say right. Hmm. No, where did I pop up? Hmm, it's displaying only four values. Where is that? Okay, I don't have to wait. This is a wrong answer again. Why is this coming out to be a wrong answer? Let's see the second last test case. That would be zero and one. 
so zero should be changed to one and it's impossible uh, right? it's impossible right? oh okay. so we have n n here one and eight to zero so it can be done eight number of steps of course right? okay okay hmm. if num equal equal negative from then what we can do is basically sign num to num but um, What if min is negative one even after the but that will be taken care of because we are only checking that it should be greater than one. Shit, I'm late. You are solved D also. Wow. Amazing. Change it. What the fuck? This doesn't make sense. How can this possibly be possibly happen? This is bullshit. Hmm. Oh. So it might be the case that um, if C of I So it might be true that B of I has a greater number. So if that is the case, then we do. But that shouldn't be the case. Hmm. Like in this case, it might have been going wrong. Here, here is it. Here is zero. No, it works. Okay. I 
It works actually. Um, how does it figure out that it is not possible? Else? So the min would be negative eight here. Sorry, the number should be negative eight here. How does it know? <clears throat> okay. And you still have to say it. This is not this. I think I'll just set men here. <coughs> Worst on this of all time. <coughs> Final seven thousand one hundred and six. How is that even logical? Hmm. How was that six thousand? When I had solved only one question, now I've done two questions, and the leaderboard shows me at seven thousand position. Amazing. Let's see the <coughs> dth question first because
he also did and it's smaller to read of course <clears throat> you have a stripe of checkered paper a flint and each cell is either white or black what is the minimum number of cells that must be recolored from white to black in order to have a segment of k consecutive black cells on the stripe if the input data is such that a segment of k consecutive black cells already exist then print 0 like a pretty standard question but I don't know how to do it <coughs> sadly I mean I need to get better at these questions <coughs> like, and these I just keep trying random complex questions and stuff and forget these simple stuff how this is done uh, so we have n and k <coughs> so the brute force approach would look like color What would the brute force approach look like? Colored I don't know. The brute force approach would look like if this color is white, then you can either choose it to be repainted or not repainted. Right. And by doing this you will get like uh, 2 raised to power the number of white different combinations and basically you can choose from them where the k subsegment of consecutive black cells occur and choose that but a better approach would be to use something like dp so but how will we apply dp cause cause i don't know <laughs> how we apply dp to these type of questions uh, ok this is the string k is 3 uh, and it's enough to color as 3 that we can see so I just need to know that from which part should I start I think I can use sliding window something like that so basically what I can do is go up till k so first list let's input the string now now I can count the number of whites and black in it so int count white 
is equal to zero from black is equal to zero <coughs> if s of i is equal to equals y then I do a count y plus plus hence I do count black plus plus right so int max y max black is equals to zero int max white sorry in max black is equal to zero and int pause i so this is the position at which it is present so if so what we can do is now we can create another list i is equal to zero sorry not zero k plus one or just k I don't even know what I'm doing so max b is currently equal to count of w sorry count of black and pause i is zero right so if um, so what i'm gonna do is uh, i minus k minus one is equals equals w and it's a blank then we what do we do now then we do count b minus minus and if s of i is equals equals b then we do a count b plus plus We just take if max b is greater than count sorry if max b is greater than sorry if count b is greater than max b then we make max b equal to count b and those are equals to i but wait a second then i would be the last index where it is present but we don't even need that right we don't even need at which position we can do that we just need to like we just need to find the maximum w right so for that matter i can go on with this loop and at the end I can just display k minus max b because these many w's you would need to change to get the answer Fuck man. Okay, something's wrong. And what is wrong?
kid so i was going up till less than k so i'm not including k actually anywhere so that was fucking wrong so that needed to be corrected ah oh, fuck Let's see this time. So he has gone for the seventh problem. After this, okay, my rank has improved. Thanks. Let's read the CS problem. Smart use of time. By the way, what what is like the uh, what is like the so. points you would get on solving this would be what will be the points uh, i think i need to go to the this is to see because we are never going to do e anyway can we do e only 800 people have solved it till now Can we do E? <sighs> nah, never mind. Okay, let's do C. Recently, Polycarp completed n successive tasks. For each completed task, the time SI is known when it was given. Uh, no two tasks were given at the same time. Also given is the time FI when the task was completed. Uh, for each task, there is an unknown value di. Duration of the task execution. It is known that the tasks were completed in order in which they came. Polycarp performed the task as follows. As soon as the very first task came, he began to carry it out. If a new task arrived before Polycarp finished the previous one, he put the new task at the end of the queue. When Polycarp finished executing the next next task, and the queue was not empty, he immediately took a new task from the head of the queue. If the queue is empty, he just waited for the next. Time. Find the d. Find d i the duration of each task. Is it as simple as it looks, or is there a twist? So what they have given is the start time of a task and the finish time of the task. what do they mean by the finish time of the task uh, uh, uh. this is take the input first So it might be difficult. Uh, so for each test case, print n positive integers the duration of each task. Uh, so is 
isn't it straightforward just printing out fi minus si we just print that first here i want i would like to show you a trick that tourist does so he does something like that's correct okay so of course it's not as simple as that so if the finish time of the finish time of a was after the start of second one so um, if f of i is greater than s of i plus one or can we do it the other way so like if i is equal to equal zero then we just display this else if f of i minus 1 is greater than start of this then that means the previous task was being done when this was given so this will get shifted ok wait so so the problem is that uh, we can assume that this starting index was then equal to f of i minus 1 and now we can safely print this okay i forgot to give an else so we could actually just do this outside instead of writing another else statement in which I am so if this is greater than or equal to or not greater than or equal to if it's equal to then again it will work right that's fine it will work so to oh shit what just happened what the fuck just happened? Okay. So, continue. Just to reduce some code, I'm ready to code. 271111 Everything seems right. Now, if this fails on test case 2, I'm gonna be so annoyed. This should not fail at test case 2. Man. This should be correct. Hmm. That's it. Jesus. I don't know why he left C. Uh, Sharma. Sharma ji. Uh, I don't know. Let's see the standards. I, I don't think I'll be able to do E. Even though this is a div 3 run. Uh, I'm not quite confident about it. but we'll just read the problem oh okay he has done e and not f and g so i don't know a batch of n goods n is an even number why even okay is brought to the store i of which has weight a of i before selling the goods they must be packed into packages after packing the following will be done there will be n by 2 packages each package contains exactly 2 goods uh, 
bunch of inputs. N by 2 packages, each package contains exactly 2 goods. Okay, weight of package that contains goods with indices i and j is ai plus ej. With this, the cost of the package, the cost of a package of weight x is always x by k balls, where k minus a, sorry, where k is a fixed and given value. So this is the flow function of x divided by k. Pack the goods to the packages so that the revenue from their sale is maximized. In other words, make n by 2 pairs of given goods such that the sum of values of this uh, is maximum. For example, n is 6, k is 3. Let's pack them into the following packages. First package we will put the third and the sixth good. Uh, cost will be five balls. Second and fifth cost will be this balls. Okay, I get the problem now. Please, I get the problem. So to solve this, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm thinking of a greedy approach, um, but I don't think greedy will work here. Um, but it might just work. So, if we are given, let's say, x and z, so what causes us to pick x plus y? over x plus z uh, let's say x y z uh, let's say w x y z right so we just have to make pairs if there are only two of them then i can only make one pair if there are three of them three can't be true right because they, they are always even so the minimum test case is this one so what makes us pick let's say if we pick w and x over w and y and w and z why is this thing better than either of these or also we can also say that x and y and x and z because these all would have been possible if this wasn't there so what made this to be better than all of these um, so and what makes us so sure that greedy approach like this would work so choosing the best option among these will help like, among these what makes us so sure that so it might be true that this one is better than this one when calculated like this x by k but in the longer run uh, by choosing this you actually made a mistake and you actually lost two points here so I don't really know so if we choose I think we are going to explore all parts then it's a DP problem and if we don't explore all parts then how are we going to know? Uh, 
uh, first of all i don't think that the order matters i of course the order matters or else the question is just like just pick a pair and then just give the answer so we just don't we don't have to flow right so let's just do a brute force it's not not a brute force just print out by pairing adjacent elements so this is like a try so let's see what difference of values is there between the actual answer and just pairing adjacent ones together so i'm just gonna take here file and i'm just gonna add to the answer something so answer can be long long i guess so answer plus oh no some I can't do this right now. Then we're gonna print out some answer. Okay, I did not take in the answer. Okay, so there is a difference of the one in the first case and the last case. Of course, there will be difference. I don't know why. Uh, so let's say a hypothetical case such that every number is divisible by k, or let's say every pair is divisible by k. So no matter what pair you take, the answer is always divisible by k. And such a scenario can be like if k is two, and all of the numbers are even. Right. So no matter which pair you take, it is going to be divisible by two. And in that case, the order will not matter. So if we take six and divide by two, three. And if we take six plus eight, that would be fourteen divided by two, seven. So three plus seven would ten. So no matter how you go about it, this will always be ten. Let's try again. So eight plus two would be ten divided by two, five plus five, right? And if we take six and two, let's say eight plus twelve. So eight divided by two, four, four plus six is again ten. So that is one thing. So the main problem arises. when we choose a number that is like so if k is 3 and we are choosing a number like 5 so 5 divided by 3 could have been better by let's say if we give 1 to it so picking 3 with 1 would have been same thing so i think uh i don't know So choosing a number where choosing a pair where a of i plus a of j mod k is equal to equal zero is the best is the best we can do right. So we are not wasting anything. Uh, any part of it
that's one way to look at it I guess and if it's not equal to zero then there might be a case where we could have we could use that extra thing so what we can do is we can pick ai plus aj having a remainder of one and we can pair it with so if this guy has having a remainder of one so that would mean like this is something k plus 1 let's say and this is k right so now if I have a number where the number is k into k minus 1 right so then I can pair k this k plus 1 with that number and get an additional number I guess huh. I guess Am I wrong or am I right? Hmm. Analyze in the statement. Third and sixth group. Third and sixth. Why did they take third and sixth? Okay, because it cost fifty. So it's kind of a question of like find the pairs that add up to a number divisible by k or something like that. So if k minus a of i or some multiple of k here is present in the map then I'm gonna pair this with that guy. figure out huh. okay so what I can look at is I can store 
ए आई मॉड मॉड के है वेट सो इफ दिस नंबर इज लाइक लेट से वन देन इफ आई वुड स्टोर के माइनस इफ आई गेट अ नंबर या आई गेट इट नॉट सो आई जस्ट हैव टू लुक एट इफ के माइनस a mod k is present then i can go for it. right so let's say the this was this turn out to be 1 and there was a number with k minus 1 as it over oh it yeah and then they would add up to be divisible by k right hmm huh. that is fine right okay, that is fine right so but now how will i identify which pair is it going to like what is the number that i have taken yes i can store uh, the index are they all uh unique numbers so they are not unique are they they are not unique this for us uh or is it okay i think it's okay and now how do i remove from an array sorry a vector uh, i don't really know <laughs> i can use a set cause cause these are indices and indices cannot be set so
I guess it is and so I'm gonna insert it only So what I can do is instead of pushing it back, uh, I can just add it to the answer. So answer plus equals s dot I don't know what that would return. So that would be an iterator. So I will do star is and I'm just gonna add this to the other guy that was P of I and divide by K. And now I just want to make sure that this thing is removed. So I'm gonna take a bool array. So a vector of bool I guess or an array. So taken or not. So this is gonna store it's taken or not. So I will do a taken of e of i or i. To be equal to zero or false, so taken true. So taken of I would be true, and taken of oh shit. Now I don't have the index of the other number. Jesus. 